the last thing we have to go over is combinations, and then on Monday we'll do practice questions, and then on Tuesday that hand in is due. And we're going to go through it. So if you have questions, you can save them for Monday. Okay, so the last thing we have to go through is order doesn't matter combination. So discuss how throwing three toys in a bag is different than lining them up. How would throwing three toys in a bag be different than lining three toys up on this desk? What would be the difference? Take all three toys, throw them in a bag, or you line them up. Right. In one bag, you throw the toys into that bag, you have all three toys, or you don't, right? So what would it be then? It would be a combination or permutation. Right, because so order doesn't matter, it would be a combination. If I was lining the three toys up on a desk, I'm lining them up, what does lining them up mean? I'm arranging them, right? If I'm arranging them, what does it mean? Permutation, order matters, okay? So this one, where I'm throwing them in a bag, would be a combination. And it would be 3C3, which is 1, which makes sense. I take all three toys, I pick all three of them. If I take all three toys and I pick all three of them and put them in a bag, there's only one way I can do that. So when you type 3C3 into your calculator, you get one. Take the toys, throw them in a bag. One way of doing it. When I line them up, it's a permutation. And it would be 3P3, which is actually the same as 3, 2, 1, which is 6. Because the three toys in a line like this, if I move one around, it makes it look different. Correct? I move it around, it makes it look different. So you get more options. So would that be enough on a diploma to get two to three marks? No. You'd have to explain yourself, right? You'd have to explain a situation where you could explain the six different ways that the toys could look if you made your own toys. Like toy one, toy two, three, toy three. And you could show the, three to, the six different outcomes of what it would look like, right? Toy one, toy two, toy three. Toy one, toy three, toy two. Toy two, toy one, two, toy three, toy two, toy, toy three, toy one. It's like a tongue twister. And you'd list your six outcomes, right? And then you could say, hey, I take my three toys, I put them in my hand, I put them in my backpack, they're in my backpack. There's only one way to do that. That's one C1. It's a combination. The way I pick the toys up in my hand and put them in my backpack doesn't make any difference. I have all three toys, right? So you have to explain yourself. This is not enough. Okay. <clears throat> so the formula is NCR for combinations, okay? It is in the same spot as probability, but instead of pressing number two for NPR, you'd push number three for NCR, right? Same thing. NCR is, um, is fancy. So for example, if I put 10C6 into my calculator, it actually equals 10C4. They're the same. Let's prove why. So over here, I have my formula, it's NCR, and then it's um, N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial, right? And I want to prove that these are equal, first off. I want to prove that 10C6 equals 10C4. So this is my N, this is my R, I'm going to fill it into my C formula. We agree? So I'm going to go 10 factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial, 6 factorial. And on this one, this is my N and this is my R. Let me get a different color. So now I'm going to go 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial, 4 factorial. Do you see the difference in the two? One I'm just putting 4s in for R, and the other one I'm putting 6 in for R. Nothing crazy, right? So then I'm going to get, oops, that's blue, 10 factorial 
over 4 factorial times 6 factorial. And on the red side, I'm going to get 10 factorial over 6 factorial, 4 factorial. Are they the same? 4 factorial times 6 factorial, is that the same as 6 factorial times 4 factorial? Yeah, when you multiply, you can do it in either order, right? So you're going to actually end up with the same answer. So then this is true. It only works for C's, though, because C has this extra R factorial on the bottom, doesn't it? P is this. So if I did 10P6 equals 10P4, <clears throat> it wouldn't be true because I get 10 factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial. There's no R after this, right? And then this one would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial. So on the bottom of this one, I get a 6 factorial, and on the bottom of this one, I get a 4 factorial. Does that give me the same answer? Do these give me the same answer? No. So this is not true. It only works with C because we have um, an N minus R on both of them and an R. What do you notice about the difference in the numbers here, the 6 and the 4? What's the difference so that this works? What do you notice about those numbers? Anything? Those numbers in the end, do you notice anything? Yeah. They're, they're both even, but that's not the essential part, but they are both even. In this case, it has to be just because of one being a 6 and one being a 4. But what is 6 and 4 and 10? 6 plus 4 is 10. Your R's have to add up to the N in order for this to be real. So I have 10C6 and I have 10C4. The 6 and the 4 add up to 10. And that works because, look, I subtract the 6 off, right? So I get the other one. This one I subtract the 4 off and I get the other one. We agree? So the two numbers actually have to add up to the N. So if I did 15C5, it would be the same as 15C what? Because when you put it into the formula, you're going to get 10. You're going to get 15 minus 5, which is 10, and 15 and 15 minus 10, which is 5. You get the opposites. They have to add to each other. Does that make sense? So up here, when I did, um, let's say, I do a question and I say, there's 10 toys, and I'm choosing five to put in a bag. And I'll choose 10 toys. I'm going to put 3 in a bag. So it would be 10C3, we agree. But they don't have that answer there. What answer could they have? Even though that one's a nicer one. They're multiple choice. They don't have 10C3. 10C7 is the answer. So they could give you 10C7 as like A, and then to screw you up, they could go 10P3. And then you're going to second guess yourself and be like, well, we're only choosing three things. It must be P, and I don't think it's a permutation because I don't think order matters, but I'm picking three things, so it must be the P. But what we have to remember is 10C7 is the exact same as 10C3. Remember that? You see how they could do that? The other thing, too, is on your formula sheet it tells you this. This NR represents NCR. So if you look over here, we have NCR equals and R in brackets. This only represents NCR. They can't do this for permutations, okay? So I could say this technically. I could say 10, 6 equals 10 what? This here, up here, can be written like this the exact same thing. Only C's. Does that make sense? You can't use that for a P. It even says it on your formula sheet, so if you forget, you can look. Okay. So let's look at some questions. Three students from a class of 10 are chosen to go on a school trip, and how many ways can they be selected? They're going on a school trip. Are they going to different places? No. So what is it, a combination or permutation? 
Order matter or order doesn't matter? The three people you're picking, do they get to go on anything special if you pick them first, second, or third? No, nope. so it's a combination. So it would be 10C3. And you could type that in and get an answer in your calculator, right? 10 probability number 3. But what if they ask me to do it algebraically? Could I just type it into my calculator at this point? No, what would I need to use? The formula. And the formula is on your formula sheet, so it's right there. So this would be my N. <clears throat> this would be my R. And the formula is N factorial, so 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. So it's 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial, 3 factorial. I always bracket anything that has more than one thing, right? Or else it's not going to do order of operations the way you want it to. It's 120. Will a C get you more answers or less answers? If it's a combination, will it get you more answers or less answers than a permutation? If I did 10 C3 or 10 P3, which one would get me more answers? P, why? Moving them. Yeah. Yeah. So a P is going to get you more answers because you're going to choose those three students and then you can move them all around. So you're going to get way more outcomes. Also, think about it this way. If I did 10 C3, I get 120 because I divide by 7 factorial and 3, correct? Because it's n minus r, r factorial. And PR is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. This one is dividing by an extra r. So you're taking even off more things. You're taking off those repetitions, aren't you? Remember how we talked about taking off repetitions of letters yesterday? You're taking those repetitions off of where they would be rearranged to give you more answers. So this one, I'm only dividing by n minus r, whereas c, I'm dividing by n minus r, and then another r factorial. So I'm taking off more answers. So c is always going to have less. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> To win the lot of 649, a person must correctly select six numbers between 1 and 49. Order does not matter. It's hard enough to even get like six of the same numbers from 1 to 49, right? 49 numbers and pick six of so that are the completely correct. Order doesn't matter. Um, how many different selections of the numbers could be made? So how many numbers do you have to choose from? 49. If you're like, oh, is 1 to 49 50, or is it 49, or is it 48? Think of it in smaller scale, okay? 1 to 3, let's say. 1 to 3 is 1, 2, 3. 1 to 3 is how many? 3. So 1 to 49, bigger scale would be 49. Think of it that way. Don't like 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 49, okay? So we have 49. Now we need to decide, is it C6, or is it 49 P6? Because I can't have repetition, I can go right to C or P. Does the order matter or does the order not matter in which you pick those numbers? Order doesn't matter. So is it C or P? C. Now 49 math probability 3, 6. 49 C6 is 13 million. 983,816. So you have a 1 in 13 million chance of actually winning the lottery, right? Then someone else could end up having, and sometimes people will say, well, someone should always win. Well, no, because there can be people who have the exact same numbers and someone who doesn't actually have the numbers I could pick, right? Because there's no set like you have to have, it. everyone has to have different numbers. So if I did 49P6, because people are like, well, that's not too bad. If I did 49P6, meaning you have to have the numbers, the six numbers, and they'd have to be pulled in the order that you picked them. Can you imagine? That would be 1.006, oh, so it would be 1.006834752. So be a billion almost. So you're like one in a billion. You're not winning, like, ever. 
like that lotto is rolling for flights, right? So that would be awful. So it is a C. So make sure that the question actually makes sense. Like if it's a one in billion chance, like hmm, probably no one's ever winning the lottery. Maybe it's a C, okay? So here we have the athletic council decides to form a subcommittee. So whenever we're forming a subcommittee, we have to decide that subcommittee of people, are you any more special if you're picked first, second, third, fourth, fifth? If you are, P. If it, that subcommittee, you're picked first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and it makes you no better than the other one, C, right? Term, comp. Okay. Athletic Council decides to form a subcommittee, so a smaller committee, of seven council members. <clears throat> so we're choosing seven. Could be a P or a C at this point, because I have no idea, right? I have to keep reading. To look at how funds raised should be spent on sport activities in the school. There are a total of 15 athle athletic council members. So there are 15 total that we are going to choose from, okay? Nine males, six females. The subcommittee must consist of exactly three females. Does this subcommittee have jobs or anything on it? Does it say anything about jobs or can it do anything more special? They're just either on the subcommittee or they're not, correct? So is this a comma or a perm? Com. So we know we at least, the very least we have C. We need to have exactly three females. Catch yourself on this. Always, always, always think, how many do I actually need? How many people do I need on this subcommittee? Seven. I need exactly three females. So what else do we need? Four what? Four males. <clears throat> this is huge. I need seven council members. So in the end, I need to have seven people being chosen, right? So if I want to guarantee getting a female, I will choose it from a female. So I would go 6, C, 3. Do you think they're going to have the answer to just 6, C, 3 on your diploma? Forgetting that you have to actually have four more boys? Do you think they're going to have 6, C, 3? They're absolutely going to have 6, C, 3, okay? The moment I don't actually lay out all seven members, I'm scared. Because I'm like, you guys are going to forget to add the other four. Because you read the seven up here and then don't carry it with you. So always, when you figure out how many council members you need on the subcommittee, write it at the bottom. Be like, I need seven people. Seven people. So in the end, I need to have chosen seven people. Right now, I've chosen how many? Three, right? This is where you're choosing? So be like, huh, I have three. I need seven. So I need four males. So the males are nine, C, four. <clears throat> now I have to decide, do I multiply them or add them? Is it an and or an or? Do I need three females and four males? Or do I need three females or four males to make the seven-person subcommittee? And. Or would mean I'd have three or four. And is that seven people? No. So I need a and. <clears throat> so this is three females and four males. So I'm going to multiply them. What do we get? Anyone? Yeah. Now this is a much smaller number than the P, because if I had P, then the three females I picked, I could then order around in different orders, and they would also count. Correct? Is that the case, though? No. If you pick first, second, or third as a female, you're either on the subcommittee or you're not. So it's a combination. Okay? We're going to skip ahead to at least at most, and we will come back to the other ones because I want to keep going with this subcommittee deal. So we're going to pop ahead to this page. <clears throat> so we're still running on what we were just running on. We're just changing the different amount of people here. So this one says 12 adults and 18 kids. So I have 12 adults and 18 kids. Very important. 12 adults. 18 kids. How many people? How many people total? 30. Where would the 30 people come in to help? 
if they didn't actually care if they were kids or adults, if they just said, I need five people to be on this subcommittee, then I would go 30C5, right? It's only if they specify I need this many kids and this many adults that we have to split them up. So I always write the total as well because sometimes they don't actually care if they're kids or, or adults or whatever, okay? Are on a prom program planning committee. A smaller group of them, five people only. Okay, no matter what, I need five people. Five people is very important. When I'm choosing, I need to have a total of five people. If I do not have five people, I screwed up. I didn't read the question right. I didn't add the right extra people. Okay? I need five people. Needs to decide on themes. How many way can, ways can this smaller group consist of? And now I'm going to have A, B, C. We're going to change up the different types of groups I want. Okay? So the, for the first group, I need at least four adults. At least, at most. Let's think about this. At least. Think about it as money. People are way better with money. If I need at least $4, what do I need? $4 or, or more, right? $4 or more. If I need at least $4, I need $4 or more. If I need at most $4, I need $4 or less. So think about it in money. So I need at least four adults. So that means one case could be four adults. Or I could have another case with what? Five adults. I heard someone say it. Could I have a case of six adults? Like I have, I have 12 adults. So could I now have a case with six adults too? No? Why? Because there's only five people in this group. So I have to stop at five, right? Can't go past that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, this is case one, case two. When I have at least at most, I have cases. So this would be case one. This is case two. Each of these cases are different subcommittees. We agree? And well, how many do I need on each subcommittee? Five. Currently on the case one subcommittee, how many people do I have? I have four. So what do I still need? One more, and then what does it have to be? Well, I have to have four adults, which means I can't have more, because more adults would be here. So what do I need? A kid. So four adults and one kid. Why is it and and not or? Why is it and and not or? I need five people. Four adults or one kid means I have four adults or I have one kid. Is that five-person subcommittee? No. So I need an and in my cases and an or between my cases. Once I have my cases laid out, it's easy to do the question. It's a combination because is there anything special about being on this subcommittee? Do you get special jobs or anything special? No, you're just on the prom, prom program planning committee really need to rewrite that because that's hard to say. Um, so nothing more special. So it's C's. We know that at the very least. How can I guarantee getting an adult? Choosing from all the people? Adults. It's the only way you can guarantee getting an adult, choosing from an adult. So how many adults are there? 12. I know it's a combination. Four. And means multiply. Kids, 18, C, 1. Put that in brackets, that's case 1. That would be if I needed exactly four adults and one kid, correct? But I can have at least four adults. So I can have four adults, or I can have case 2, which is five adults. Or, always goes in between cases. When you have more than one case, you always add them. Because you have this case, or you have this case. So either four adults or five adults. Does that make sense? Okay. Now this one, I need five adults. So I have how many adults? Twelve. And I choose five. I start over with twelve again. Why? Because they're completely separate cases. I either have this case with the options of twelve and eighteen, or I have this case with the option of twelve and eighteen. Could I go eighteen C zero at the back? I chose no kids. Sure. Do you need to do that? 
Okay, type it into your calculator, every single person. See if you can get it right. You don't get this, call me over. Why is that nine really spicy? 9,702. Everyone get that? Okay. Okay, the next one says, I want, same thing, five-person subcommittee. Yeah. Because there was none of them. Right. It doesn't say like it doesn't say it could say that though. I've seen questions where they do do that. They say you have to have at minimum one kid. So if you have to have at minimum one kid, you wouldn't be able to use that case. Yeah. And people will still use that case and they'll give that answer, but it wouldn't be right because you need to have at least one kid. Yeah. Okay. At least one adult means one adult or what? More. Right. So let's look at this. <clears throat> I could have one adult. What do I need to join with that adult? Yeah. So one adult and four kids. Or what? Two adults. and three kids or three adults and two kids or now we're back to the same example last one four adults and one kid Or five adults. And then we just fill every single one in the same way we did before. 12 goes with the adult, 18 goes with the kids. So 12C1 times 18C4 plus 12C. Two times eighteen C three plus twelve C three times eighteen C two plus twelve C four times eighteen C one plus twelve C five. There's a bit of a faster way, but if I show it today, you'll be overwhelmed. So I'll show it to you Monday. What if the next one says, at most two adults? What does that mean? At most two adults. Two or less. What do you think people forget? Zero adults. They go two, they go one, they forget you could have none. Right? So at most two adults means two adults or less. So that would be two, one, or zero. So we'd have two adults and 
three kids because it always needs to give me a five person subcommittee. Or one adult and four kids. Or zero adults. Do I need to put zero adults? No, but I can. And five kids. So I'm going to do 12C2 times 18C3 plus 12C1 times 18C4 plus 12C0 plus 18C5. We. Well, it's not a plus sign, it's a times. Okay, makes sense. Here's mine. Okay, we're going to go here. Okay, deck of cards. If you don't know what's in a deck of cards, it's not the end of the world, you could ask me. Um, I'm not testing you on whether you know what's in a deck of cards. So if you all of a sudden got hearts um, and you're like, oh no, I forget how many hearts there are, you could call me over and ask. That's not going to be my be all end all. If they gave you actual card question on the test, they'd have to give you an array of cards, like what all the different cards look like. You'd have to see all 52 cards in an array. Okay, so if I give you one on the test, I give you a full array of the cards so you can see them. What they would often do, though, is they would actually make a whole new deck of cards. They'd be like, the deck of cards has four suits, red, green, purple, and orange, numbered one to five, or something, so that everyone's on the same page. And if, whether you play cards or not, you're of no more benefit than the other person. Okay? For this case, though, we're going to actually use the 52 deck cards. In a 52 deck of cards, there are four suits, spades and clubs, which are the black cards which there are two suits of them. So of the black cards, there's 26, half the deck. And then there's diamonds and hearts, which is half, there are two suits, which are red. That's half the deck, so there's 26 of those as well. Each suit has 13 cards. So if it said hearts, it'd be 13. If it said clubs, it'd be 13. If it said spades, it'd be 13. Diamonds, 13. Face cards are considered to be jack, queen, and king. So there are four jacks, one of each suit, four queens, one of each suit, four kings, one of each suit. So there's 12 face cards. Okay. So now it says, poker is a, gar a card game played from a deck of 52 cards. Now remember, if we wanted females, we had to choose from females. If we wanted to guarantee we got adults, we had to choose from the adults. Kids, we had to choose from the kids, right? If we want to guarantee we have hearts, we'd have to choose from hearts. Face cards, we have to choose from face cards. Black cards from black cards, right? Okay. So poker is a card game played from a deck of 52 cards. These are the makeup. How many different five-card poker hands are possible? So we're going to pick five cards. Down here, we're still going to pick five cards. Okay? So just like we had to have a five-person subcommittee in the previous question, we have to have five cards total, no matter what. Okay? So how many, the first one is, how many five-card poker hands are possible? Did I ask of any specific type of card? No. Cards are always combinations. Why? Does the order in which you get those five cards in your hand matter? No. The moment you get five cards in your hand, what can you do with those cards? Shuffle them. The moment you can shuffle them means order didn't matter. 
because you can move them wherever you want, right? So cards are always in your hand or not. So if they're in your hand or not, just like the toys were in the bag or they weren't, it's a combination. Yeah? They won't ask them like that because they would have to specifically like, you'd have to, they could ask it if they said like the person was arranging their cards on the table in a row using the word arrange, then it would be a perm. Yeah. Okay. So we have five dear card per, ugh, five card poker hands. How many cards are we choosing from here? Does it give us any specific type of card I need? No. How many cards do I have? 52. 52. C. How many am I choosing? Five. So when people are playing poker, they have a 1 in 2,598,960 chance of getting the same hand as someone else. The exact same hand. Now, in poker, you could have like a full house with two of something and three of another. Um, someone else could have that, but the exact same one, same number, same card, same everything would be a one in this chance. There's so many totally different hands I could get. Okay? So here it says, in how many ways, um, in how many of the hands in A will there be all diamonds? So all diamonds means what? It's a fancy way of saying how much in this case. 13 is how many we're choosing from. How many cards are we choosing? Five. So all diamonds means we want five diamonds. Why do we only want five diamonds? Because it's a five-card hand. We can't have more. So the way we can guarantee getting diamonds is choosing from diamonds. So we'll do 13 diamonds, C5. So there are 1,287 hands, different hands, that would get you all diamonds. Which is that a flush, I think? I think so. I don't poker. So I think that's a flush, because I think a straight is when the numbers are in order, right? When they're all the same suit, isn't that a flush? Mm -hmm. I think a straight is in order, and then you can have a straight flush, which is like straight and in the same color, I think. I think there's like a royal, royal, royal house, royal, royal flush. So then it would be the head people in the right order, same color. I don't know. We can make up anything at this point. I don't really know. Okay. So the next one, we want four black cards and one red card. We always ask ourselves, we need five cards. Did they actually tell us five cards? Yes. If they didn't tell us five cards, we have to add another card or something, right? Right now I have four and one. Yay, they gave me enough. Because sometimes there'll be like four reds, and they don't tell you one black, but you have to know that it's one black because you have four reds and I need five cards, so the other one must be a black. Think so? Okay, so how do I guarantee getting four black? Choosing them from the black, half the deck is black. So 26 C4 and multiply one red card, 26 C1. We're going to go down to four. Three kings. Okay, how many kings are there? Four. C3. Do you think that answer is going to be on the diploma? Yeah. It's not right, though. Why isn't it right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have four C3, which is great, but how many cards do I have in my hand currently now? Three. That's the crappiest poker hand ever because you're never like you don't even have five cards to play with. So we have three kings. Can we can we have any more kings? No, because it says exactly three kings. So we're gonna say three kings and two other cards. Two other than king. 
So how many cards are not kings in a deck? Remember, there's 52 cards in a deck. Four are kings. 52 minus 4 is 48. So we have and 48C2. Four aces. How many aces do we have to choose from? One in each suit. So how many? Four. C4, which is one. Done. Am I done? No. How many cards do I have currently in my hand? Four. How many do I need? Five. So four aces and one other. How many others are there? 48 again. Is it always 48? No. If it was like black cards, then the others would be red cards and there'd be 26, right? I think it's 48. Five cards of the same suit. Does it say which suit? So let's do hearts. How many hearts are there? 13, C, 5. Or diamonds. 13, C, 5. Or spades. Thirteen. C5. Or clubs. What do we have to do with each of these cases? Add them up. Or what could we do? 4 times 13 C5. Does that make sense? So whenever we're forming subcommittees or hands or whatever, we have to find out how many people I need on that. Or how many cards do I need? Do I need five? Okay. They gave me four. Wait a second. I need to get another one, right? That's going to be the catch when they don't give you the total. When they don't give you three boys and two girls, when they give you just three boys. And you're like, okay, I have a subcommittee. It has three boys on it. Now I have three. A subcommittee of three. I need a subcommittee of five. Crap. I need two girls. Okay? So you need to always read how many you need, because they might not always list the exact amount. Make you find the department. All right. We did all of those. Those are just extra practice. This is your homework. Honestly, perms and comms, you almost have to give all the questions because every question is just a little bit different. If you don't practice them, you don't get good at them. Whereas like when you're doing um, like a solving log question, I can give you like six different types and then I've covered all the different types and you can solve them. Perms and comms aren't like that. Here's this one and then this one has a little tweak and this one has a little difference and then this one has a little difference. This one's nothing like the other ones, so you kind of have to practice them. So if when you're doing your homework from yesterday and today, you have any that you are not getting, that means probably the rest of the class is not getting them as well star them, and then the beginning of class on Monday we'll go through them. And then we'll just practice, practice, practice questions, and then your hand in is due Tuesday and we'll go through it on Tuesday. 